Hey y'all, back with part two of the weight regain series. If you have not checked out part one, go do that. This will make a lot more sense. Uh, but part two is gonna cover the physiological factors that are involved with weight loss adaptations. So these are very normal. You will hear the word metabolic damage thrown out a lot, and you will hear things like, oh, when you diet, you know, your body enters starvation mode and things like that. Okay, no. <laughs> not true um, and that could be a, maybe a later video but just in general no matter how you diet no matter how good or how bad good bad whatever uh, you will have adaptations to weight loss now our goal is to obviously minimize the adaptations uh, we're not just willy-nilly dieting like assholes over here but there will be adaptations regardless of how you diet so I want to kind of cover some of the heavy hitters for the physiological changes that do occur with dieting so first I want to talk about REE, which is resting energy expenditure. So this is basically your metabolism as a whole. So if we are looking at just your REE, we will see a decrease. But when we kind of break apart each individual part, we break apart each part. <laughs> that was great. Um, so, you know, <laughs> so well thought out on my part. Um, if we break apart each individual section, that's a little better we will see that um, some parts are more affected than others. But yes, if you do um, just look at REE without looking at its constituents, you will see a small overall reduction. So BMR or RMR stands for basal metabolic rate or resting metabolic rate. There are minor differences. Um, basal metabolic rate typically involves people staying in the lab overnight to get testing done, which most people do not want to do. Um, so most people are gonna get an RMR, um, which is your resting metabolic rate. They're very, very similar and it's a good, um, you know, it's a really good technique. So, but when you do your RMR, you do need to be in a relaxed state. It should be, you know, in the morning. You should have no food and no water, things of that nature. So um, you don't want anything to spike your RMR. So when you see people going and doing this kind of testing, you know, middle of the day, maybe they had some caffeine or they had food. No, that's completely null and void. Same thing goes with body fat testing as well. Just a little snippet there. So if you're going to do an RMR, do it fasted in the morning. Now, um, this does decrease when you diet, but it is small, but just think about it, like you weigh less. So going back to our first video, the example, you used to be 180 pounds and now you're 150. Well, your metabolism doesn't need to be as fast because, well, you're a smaller person. So that pretty much makes intuitive sense. Um, but so in general, the RMR or BMR is gonna be how many calories you burn at rest. So if you're a smaller person, you're most likely going to burn less calories than somebody at rest. Honestly, we don't see a huge change here. Like changes are minor, of course, like it does decrease over time. Um, and I've done this because now I've had body comp data for years at USF with Dr. Campbell. And we do see a reduction, you know, after I've done many, many months of contest prep dieting. It's not a massive change though, and it wouldn't be something that would explain all the other adaptations, if that makes sense. So yes, you will see a decrease and that is normal. Um, but there's also other factors too. So TEF, oh, I made a little mistake there. That is, that is wrong, <laughs> TEE. -E. Okay, that should be an F, wow. If I was a good editor, I would just fix this, but that might just stay in there. <laughs> so TEF is the thermic effect of food. And basically this is how many calories you digest burning you burn digesting your food. I am just on another level today, you guys. The white, you know, I love the whiteboard, but it is it is throwing me off my game a little bit, not gonna lie. Um, it is throwing me off a little bit. <laughs> the TEF is how many calories that you burn when you are digesting food. So also, this is gonna go down very normally when you're eating less food. Not a big surprise there. You weigh less, your RMR is gonna be a little less. You eat less, your TEF is going to be less. Now. There are certain foods that have higher thermic effective feeding. Um, so like example, protein is pretty much the highest one, whereas, you know, dietary fat is less. So just something to consider, like obviously, you know, if you have a higher protein diet, you will keep this portion up, but also just know that it will go down with less food. Now, EAT is the energy activity thermogenesis constituent of REE. And this is basically how many calories you burn during exercise. So this one, can kind of be looked at in two ways. So one, it may go up actually when you are dieting because let's say you are um, 
you know, using cardio as a tool to increase your calorie deficit. Well, if you were doing maybe, let's say, you know, a few sessions in the off season, maybe 60 to 90 minutes in the off season per week, and then now you're doing an hour per day, right? That is gonna go up. But if you look at it the other way, so say you're doing the same exercise, same cardio, like like running is a really easy example. Um, you're going to improve actually your economy and how you do it. So you might burn slightly less calories if you do it more often because you actually are better at the movement. Um, but this one is just really going to be variable. Some people only focus on like when they're dieting on just calories and they keep training pretty similar and they keep, you know, just exercise in general pretty similar while their diet fluctuates more. With a lot of clients that we coach um, and in particular physique athletes, like you're going to be doing more cardio so that that one's a little bit just dependent on you um but neat now is the biggest biggest component so neat stands for non-exercise activity induced thermogenesis so basically how many calories you burn not doing exercise <laughs> so non-exercise so this is going to be strictly weightlifting cardio you know stuff that is very you know you know that it's exercise neat is fidgeting me moving around you know, getting up from the couch to, you know, oh, I forgot I got to go do that. I'll go do that right now. Um, just being active, you know, like all these kinds of small movements. When you are dieting, your body will severely restrict your NEAT levels. Um, so, it, you know, think about it as just spontaneous activities. As anybody who's listening who's been very lean, you know that this does go down dramatically when you're dieting. Like, if you're on the couch, which I'm looking at my couch right now, it is so comfortable. Oof. When you're on the couch and you're prepping, and something needs to get done, you're like, I'll go do it when I need to do it. Not right now. Like you're like glued to the couch. Like you are the epitome of a sloth. <laughs> like sloth mode <laughs> is engaged. Um, and that is because your body is trying to conserve energy where it can, right? Body is very, very smart. So um, actually one of the studies that's really cool. So it's Liebel et al. He's amazing researcher in this whole field of just kind of body fat in general. So they've seen a 37.5 reduction in NEAT with weight loss and a 60.2% increase with weight regain or just weight gain in general. Um, and some studies have actually calculated that about 78% um, NEAT is, contributes to about 78% of the changes in RE. So like I said, the other ones are pretty small. RMR might go down a little bit, TEF going down a little bit, EAT uh, just depends. Neat can take a huge hit and this is just particularly because your body is very smart and it's saying, okay, well, I'm just going to sit around because I don't want you to get any leaner. So this is the big one that I really, really, um, you know, try and focus on with people. And a lot of this too is genetic. They've actually done other studies, which is interesting too, where they've overfed people, same amount. Um, and some people barely gain weight, other people gain loads of weight. And that's because their overall neat levels were just different. And then the, the researchers didn't tell them to do anything differently. Some people just had more food and they naturally started using it more and started being more spontaneous and doing more activities, not necessarily working out more. They were just doing more things. Whereas the other people, um, who just gained a lot of weight, they didn't, they didn't change their energy output at all in comparison with any energy intake so super super interesting and we have control over this yes there is a genetic part some people are just gonna you know have a higher need than others but now that you know this you can actually control it and you can make sure that when you catch yourself you know being very sloth mode like you can kind of get out of that and that's where a lot of people find that the steps are helpful um that can turn into a whole kind of crazy thing too though like does it actually accurately track it like do you become obsessive with it because i see that all the time um but in general you know sometimes for some people having step goals is very helpful or you know like the 10 minute walks just get up and go do that or you know just working in general daily activity is very helpful for keeping need up all right, the other part of this equation is the hormonal adaptations that you're gonna see when you're dieting. So some of them are gonna go up, some are gonna go down, and cortisol is going to be one of the ones that goes up because it is a stress, you know, there's a hormone that is secreted during the stress response and dieting is a stressor to your body. So cortisol is gonna go up um, and ghrelin is also gonna go up. That is, also, that is known as a hunger hormone. So if you're ever hungry when you diet, which is a lot of people, <laughs> I would say most people are hungry when they diet, not all. But most, and this is usually the, um, you know, the reason that people fall off actually from their diet is just due to hunger and not liking to be hungry. So those two are going to go up and then what's going to go down is thyroid's going to go down. Um, you know, part of that is, you know, less body weight, again, kind of makes sense. And then leptin, 
um, it's gonna go down as well. So leptin is actually stored in fat cells and this is the satiety hormone. So if you have less fat in your fat cells, you're gonna have less leptin. So these two together, the lower, le lower leptin and higher ghrelin is really like the sucker punch of hunger that you feel when you're dieting. Um, and then sex hormones can go down as well to this amount will vary um, Typically men see a very stark decrease in male hormones, so testosterone um, If they are doing let's say like a physique competition um, Getting to very low body fat levels um, women don't see as much of a decrease because I don't like just because there's less in general like we have a lot less um, you know testosterone of course um but there are reductions and especially you know pretty much everything's going to go down it's just going to depend on how much it goes down depends on your diet depends on your genetics depends on if you're enhanced if you're not i mean there's so many factors here but if say you're going to get blood work done and you are a natural athlete you're going to have really shitty sex hormones like it's just that's just what you're going to see um, obviously, I can't say like that forever, but I would say that it probably like let's say you dieted for like six months It's probably gonna take about six months to go back to normal at least and then like we talked about before the other Adaptation is just the fat cells are shrinking. Um, they're not going away. So they are more sensitive So this is just in general um, Another adaptation that you see which can you know kind of go back to the brain all of these signals Hey, we need to pump out these hormones and we need to try to get this person to conserve energy So reduce your need reduce all those other things or we need to make them feel hungrier That so that they need to you know go eat something because they're obviously starving. So these are just some of the adaptations and uh, I'll also link an article in here as well uh, this is not a published like scientific paper, but this was written by an amazing scientist, Dr. Eric Trexler, um, and he cites a bunch of research. So definitely check that out um, if you want to learn more. And he does dive pretty deep, but it is, you know, regular writing, although it is it is pretty sciencey, but it's uh, a little bit more manageable than maybe like the one that I linked the last video that's like straight up research paper. Um, so he goes kind of into more details on this. Um, but in general, yeah, you guys, like, you're going to see these adaptations. So when people mark it, like, oh, you have all these, these metabolic damage and this and that, you have adaptations and we need to work to fix them, which is why you don't chronically diet forever. But this is setting the stage for people to gain weight after they diet, especially if you don't know how to handle this.